Welcome back to some more black sand under the skin. Uh, I apologise guys for the technical issues with this video. There are still some major problems with the game including the voiceovers, uh, some of the uh, twitching in between different scenes and just general FPS issues. Anyway, this is black sand under the skin, part 6. Let's do this. Hmm, where are you hiding little fishy? Once again, you didn't get to hear the end of my story. Okay, we need to get out of it quick. Welcome back, guys. That was intense. That was intense. Let's see if we can get out of here alive, shall we? Okay, let's attack him. Oh, shit! Oh, little bastard! Okay, let's retry that, shall we? Oh, I don't like him. Okay, what are the other options? We had uh, run. I think we had hide or... Let's have a quick look. He's got that. I, feel, I didn't see the shotgun in his hand. Uh, let's ring the bell. What? Just where do you think you're going, putty cats? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Two sacred principles rule my life. The love, the love you feel I for feel for. What is going on today? What the hell? <laughs> What's going on? What is going on? That's, that's twice I've been shot in about a minute. Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is... The love I feel for my family. The second... Never leave destiny in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. Okay, and so I'll let, I'll let him talk then. Or better yet, a rule. If anything, if anything threatens either of these two princes, I take matters into my own hands. The first time that someone died because of me, even though all I did was rat him out, well... That guy ended up in the Hudson River, right off Pier 27. He's got to be even wetter than that fish by now. <laughs> you should have seen his face. It's the interesting what comes to mind when you think you're about to die. Suddenly all I could think about was how much I wanted a pet fish. <laughs> anyway, I was 14 years old, and I still dream about it. By then, I was adamant about buying a fish. But, but first, that was that. Never again. Nowadays, whether it's me who pulls the trigger or not, I have zero regrets. What's more, I sort of enjoy it. Okay, so we got some. Uh, let's have a quick look at this one. In case anyone had any doubts about who's the boss around here. I'll put my dirty feet on his luxurious table to prove that all of this is mine. His pupils are dilated, and there's a slight grin on his face. The bastard is enjoying himself. Come on. There we go, got it. When a mob boss declares his love of family, it can only mean that A, he won't hesitate to ruin yours, and B, he's cheating on his wife. Okay, there's one more. The gun. 
The guy never hesitates to pull the trigger. Even if I hadn't seen what he did to Jimmy, I'd know he's not bluffing. I knew I had it in me to get out of that place alive. Okay, so Mary's been at Yao's place recently, no. Um, son of Dominance. Okay, so we're using O'Leary's love for... Yep. No? Okay. No. O'Leary's sign... O'Leary's feet, okay. No, okay. Hmm. No. See, a lot. I, I don't. I feel that a lot. A lot of these don't really kind of add up. If that makes sense. Like, Dunn's murder had been carefully planned out. I mean, what's... No. Okay, what was that? No. O'Leary's wife is having an affair with Colbert? Should See I what I mean? That doesn't really make any sense. Letter, or threaten Colbert so he'll get me out of this mess. And, well, that's it, I think. <laughs> you know, Black Sad, I've never made it this far. Congratulations. You're going in style. I didn't want to interrupt you because I respect you and your word. But I'm actually here to help. Your wife is having an affair with Colbert. What? <laughs> Me? No way. Yes, why? <laughs> well, here's the thing. I don't respect your word. And since you brought me no proof... Check my coat pocket on the right. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, black sad, black sad, black sad. <laughs> uh, oops. <gasps> Thank you very much. And sorry for jumping to conclusions. First, you get a random beating from my man. And here we are. When you shared what you'd found in Yale's apartment, well, it made me sort of want to trust you. But as you well know, you can't trust anyone in this world. Take it. It's only fair. I want to place about on Sonya Dunn's behalf. I don't want your money. I'll make good use of it. Hmm, should we put a bet? No? Alright then, I understand. No problem. Really? Oh, Black Sad. Aren't these odd hours to pay me a visit? Your message was important, but certainly not urgent. It could have waited until tomorrow, don't you think? Um, okay. That's Colbert. Don't look at me. This was Colbert's idea. I wish I was a noir fiction writer. 
At this very moment, I could write a couple of pointed, ironic remarks for the narrator to recount what I just lived through. The dark, crooked alleys of New York reminded me of the state of my own soul. Hmm. No. Fall loomed over me with the... Fall struck me with the full force of my long-lost youth. Nah, not that. Oh, Fall shit! Fall descended over me with the full weight of a guilty conscience. Is that an elephant, man? <laughs> That's an elephant! That's an elephant! <laughs> See, see if we can work out what this one is. This is a, um, I don't know, a horse. A horse, maybe? What were you thinking? He wants him alive! Hell's horses. I felt fall seep through my bones like the pain of a good beating. <laughs> Mediocre, but appropriate. It definitely had a good beating. Against all odds, next morning I got up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And I had my kind, unknown assailants to thank. The beating had taken its toll, but for the first time in months, I had slept like a baby. Oh, come on, Helen, focus! All right, take five. We'll work on that double backhand later. FBI? Mr. Blackmore, what can I do for the FBI? Okay, you better consider uh, you don't want the FBI. Okay, uh, what in America would say successful? We want to cooperate with the law enforcement. Okay. Cooperate with law enforcement. All you have to do is talk. <laughs> I like to speak through my actions, but still, could you be more specific? Maybe what's she, what's she if doing? Speak in private. Alec, coming. You've got four minutes, Mr. Blackmore. So make them count. Okay, fake relationship with Stone contraband. Let's try contraband. We know you smuggle contraband during your international tournaments. Oh, really? Are you sure? Like, what exactly? Hmm. I think she called my bluff. Or did okay. she? Okay. Should I follow through or say I was kidding? Cigarettes. You smuggle tobacco. <laughs> You're just making it up as you go, aren't you? To think I was starting to like you. Come on. What do you really want from me? Rigged, uh, rigged, rigged games. There we go. Rigged games during your first year as a professional player. And? You won all of them. <laughs> Are you trying to offend me? I give my all on the court. I can't be held accountable if my rivals don't do the same. Go interrogate them. Okay, O'Leary. We know about you and Desmond O'Leary. Wow. The FBI sure knows what it's doing. So, out of the 100 million Americans who know about that, who did you extort to get such highly confidential information? The thing is, well... <sighs> you see, I'd love to wipe out that part of my past, but whatever. Do you have any regrets? Ads <laughs> pay more than trophies. Can you believe it? Being associated with such a shady character can only damage my reputation. Trust me. 
Never get involved with a married man. Anyway, at least now I know why you mentioned the rigged games. I can't blame you, Mr. Blackmore. I understand why I seem suspect. They say you're currently involved with Al Stone, the boxer. Is that correct? Wow, your sagacity never ceases to amaze me. Don't beat around the bush. We know why you're with him. Oh, so you like his biceps too. Desmond O'Leary asked you to seduce Stone. Why? What? No, I met Al by chance at a party. A party hosted by Desmond O'Leary. No, that can't be. No one is that shrewd. Not even him. Damn, I hate that bastard. Anyway, now I get why you brought up the rigged games and your obsession with O'Leary. What do you really have against him? And don't say illegal gambling. Um, he works with Chicago Mob. Yep. We've got reason to believe he's working with the Chicago Mob. This isn't just illegal gambling anymore. It's organized crime. I think I know where you're going with this. Smuggling tobacco. I'm serious, Miss Moore. America can't afford to let anyone shake its foundations like that. And America's sweetheart can't afford it either. Help us out. Talk to us. And why should I, Mr. Blackmore? What do I stand to gain or lose? We could put an end to your career. Uh, now let's ask for a favor. The FBI always returns a favor. Oh yeah? Are they gonna rig my games? <laughs> this is actually quite simple. I was I say I loved you now and forever was that? And then we're going back on to look at this. Hang on. No. Oh my god. The game is doing the weird thing again. One lucky gal. You have a light, sir. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. My uh <laughs> My computer is playing silly buggers. The pearly white teeth of someone who barely smokes. Am I making her nervous? Damn. I'm almost out of fluid. Wanna know my trick? Go down to start, then up with it, and then down again. Almost. Almost. Thanks. I don't know what you want me to say. You're trying to frame O'Leary, perhaps rightfully so, but I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Believe me. If I had the slightest... Come on, Helen. <sighs> Time to work on your backhand. Let's go. <sighs> Do you smoke? <laughs> oh, well. Nice meeting you, Mr. Blackmore. Did you bring my water? Unfortunately, guys, this game still does have some technical difficulties. Uh, I was hoping they'd have them fixed by now, but never mind. She tossed a cigarette in your face? <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Too bad I was busy chasing Cassidy. If that had been me, America would no longer have a sweetheart. <laughs> so, what do you say, you and me, we change places next time, huh? Your turn. Now tell me, what did you find out? Ah, you're gonna love this. You ready? I've got news, but I happen to also have a pla- uh. Black Sad. What? Who is... Oh, Mrs. Colbert. But last night he got a phone call. He said he had to work. And he still hasn't come back. Nobody's seen him at work 
since yesterday evening. Cuz, I haven't heard from you since our first conversation. Do you have anything? Uh, he ran away with his lover. Let's try that. Your husband ran away with his lover. Somewhere far. Farther than you can imagine. I'd forget him if I were you. It's time to... What? Why didn't you tell me before? I know. I should have said something. I'm afraid I can't hide the truth. Mrs. Colbert? That good for nothing. I'm gonna scratch his eyes out. I'll tear his stupid head off. I'm gonna make him regret. Um, <laughs> but what just happened? Is there anything you didn't tell me? Maybe. But now it's your turn. Tell me about Cassidy. Ugh. Come on, spit it out. I, I didn't find anything suggesting that Cassidy had anything to do with Dunn's murder, but... That's quite the tale. But I know Cassidy will be playing poker tonight with one Howard M. Farnham II, a Texas tycoon looking to get his claws on the boxing business. I also know that he and Cassidy have never met in person. And that Farnham, who's staying at, at the Balford Hotel, hasn't left his room. Apparently, he spent the night with three bottles of bourbon. So, here's my incredible plan. I'll go to the hotel. <laughs> I'd knock him out. Huh, and then take his place in the poker game. That way, I'll get Cassidy talking. What do you think? Incredible, right? Huh? Huh? Uh -huh. Didn't we agree that you would handle Helen more while I dealt with Cassidy next time? No? Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. Room service. I brought the bottles you ordered. I didn't order me no drinks. And you're not wearing the hotel uniform. Move on, you drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Should we try that again? Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. How, uh, Frank Cassidy. Blackmore. I work for Frank Cassidy. He asked me to bring you these bottles so you could choose which one you prefer for the game. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> well, come on in then. Getting in Farnum's room was easy. Earning his trust was another story. But I always have an ace up my sleeve. Blackmore? You okay, partner? The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And sometimes, the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. I... I don't know where to begin. I'm falling apart. The world is falling to pieces. And so am I. Everywhere I look, I see corruption, lies, and filth. New York is nothing but a landfill. The Yankees can't get worked up. Down in Texas, we got them damn Catholics from Mexico. But sure as hell, there's a way to deal with it all. One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace. 
not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. I wish I was like you. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! Once I had gained Farnham's trust, <laughs> the hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. Okay, so we're actually trying to pretend to be him now. Is that a crow? Or an eagle? That's an eagle, isn't it? <laughs> Look at him! Oh, he's hilarious. What can I do for you, sir? Okay, uh, I'm here to play some poker. I'm here to play me some poker. You got the wrong place, sir. Damn. Did you miss the barbershop sign above the door? You have a good evening, sir. Okay, we missed Wait, that up. Uh... <sighs> okay, yeah, we missed that up. Let's try that again. The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? Okay, should we go for I'm Howard? Yeah, there we go. Let's try that one. Howdy. My name's Howard M. Farnham II. Okay. Should I know you? What can I do for you, sir? Okay, try to remember. Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Oh, what's going on here? Come on, frame rate. Uh, find the requested info before the timer runs out. Oh, really? Jesus. Okay. Ding dong. Interesting name for a town. Okay, what's this one? Got a glass, I guess. Business card. Barbers, 9 p.m. Yes, I got a Vietnamese shave last night. No. Please, come in. Of course, I remember you. Take a seat. Uh-oh. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. Okay. I understand. Sure. I get it. I'm glad to hear that. Now, please answer my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? Oh god, try to remember. Let's try this again, shall yeah, we? Yeah, sure enough, Booth put the nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. <laughs> my second marriage, too. You know what I did to her daddy? Same <laughs> old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my gun and only deal with hookers. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham, so I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, let's try that one. I'm Cassidy's slave. He lent me the money for a game deposit, and I lost it all. Now I have to work off my debt. Oh, Cassidy's not your problem, son. It's poverty. Sure enough, I had to pay my own deposit this morning to y'all, and that was just petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me my receipts. These things I am bored. 
Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I gotta get some more. Just a sec. I'll get it. I just, just put, put it over. Over. I think he's. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna have to find it again. Uh, let's check that. What's Ding that? Dong? No. Interesting name for a town. No, over there. Come on. Farnham's address book. Who knows what kind of shitty characters are in there? Okay, it's not enough time. Come on. No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. Ah, oh, I'm gonna screw this up. I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never giving a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. Oh! <laughs> I knew it. It's not enough time. It's like 30 seconds. And you, you have to go for the animations, which are so bad. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me... No, we ain't got to watch all this again, have we? Who do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I, I gotta get some more. Just a sec. I'll get it. I, I just... Just put, put it over. Over. I think he's... I'll be right back. So I'm looking for a receipt. Now, we know it's not in the wardrobe. It's not on the table. I reckon it might be on him. Yeah. Come on. Is that it? Okay, yeah, 20,000. That was a good guess, wasn't it? Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain. But tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Try to remember. <laughs> Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. When I met that woman, she had no manners, no money, no... Who in the hell... Farnham, by God, if it ain't the hero of the day. Come on, get it. Oh, there we go. It's not going to be easy to sound Texan. But I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> this will surely imbue me with the Texan spirit. Nothing says Texan like a cowboy hat. A belt, maybe? No. Come on. I'll be damned. Oh my god. There we go. I probably don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to try. Anyway, Kenny. Thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> god bless you, brother. <laughs> Mm. 
craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny. Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? Come on, you're wasting so much time. Not oh even my a god. Let's try in here. They smell like a party. Come on, D, hurry up. Hurry up. There we go. Okay, what about the briefcase? No, it's enough for D. <laughs> Okay, let's check him again. Come on, go round. Oh my god, there's so many bloody cards in this room. We want a different clue, please. Ding dong. Oh god. Interesting name for a town. No. No. Okay, I'm stuck. Can't move. Kenny. 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 Hey, do you think you can't be friends with someone and not know their last name? Huh. Let me think. No. Oh, I knew he was going to do that. Yeah, guys, I've got to say, the, the, the controls and some of the, uh, the mechanics are quite great in... It's a shame, really. I really wanted this game My to be something special, and it just doesn't quite fit the bill. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? There's so many issues with the game, like having to listen to all this again. So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? So the counter's going down and I can't move. Um, we've already been through that, so there's nothing else there. Okay, there's nothing in the bathroom. There's nothing. That's just the to uh, the token for the. Uh, and I guess we're going back in here. Dress book. Luckily, there was only one Kenny in front of him's address book. Kenny Eeks, residing at. Cornell Plaza, Manhattan, stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? Uh, a nice big pompadour? Try to remember. Let's try to remember. Oh, God. Right. Okay. We're going back in here again, are we? Let's try that. Oh, God. Come on. Hurry. No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's oh, always God. a way to win their heart. Come on, I'm wasting too much time. Oh, God. Too late. Don't tell me, Billy Bob. I've got to say, guys, this they part has been absolutely painful to play. Right? It really has. Um, if slash, oh, I'd say he, could, he was fixing to give me a shave. Sure enough, your barber was fixing to give me a shave. <laughs> you can get a good shave at another time. Billy Bob is always at our beck and call. Of course. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's a nine Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. Of course. Sure. But you better take good care of my girl. It'll be my 
pleasure. Oh, he's creepy, that eagle. Welcome, gentlemen. Chips are on the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxers and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. No offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Well, I'll do what I can. Now you got me worried. Never trust a humble player. The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues, then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. It had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas. Ding dong. Gambling is legal. You mean ding dong, Texas? <laughs> ding dong. That's it. <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs> Well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Ventimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly. No. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea <laughs> how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women. They even take our damn names. Ha! <laughs> uh, ha! just laugh. <laughs> You're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool, and I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You're looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? No. This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. And guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Um, homicidal boxers, rebel coaches. Uh, yeah, let's try illegal gamblers. Having to compete with illegal gamblers like that old Leary fella. Huh? Oh. <laughs> One would almost think that you live in New York, my friend. That son of a bitch killed one of my men and left the poor bastard on my damn porch. But he's a goner now. Ever since the sport got put on TV, people want a fair game, honest boxes, and no shady business. You can't break the law anymore like before. Nowadays, they gotta bribe those big network executives to negotiate for broadcasting rights. Billy Bob, bring out the bourbon. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake.
Play to win. Damn it. What again? How many games have you won, Farnham? It looks like we got a serious contender. <laughs> hey, Quint, you better start unbuckling that championship belt. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't over yet. Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, 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 by the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, playing bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Um... Damn! I don't like waiting. Kenny won't like it, but I'm not gonna sit here wondering. Billy Bob, pass me the phone. Come on, come on, come on! Sometimes you get the feeling that it's all gone wrong. <laughs> you made a terrible mistake. Yep. Uh oh. <laughs> Did I say sometimes? <laughs> no. That only happens once in a lifetime. Well, that wraps up that video. If you want to see more, then check out the channel. Until next time, guys. See ya.